Hi, and this, this is Shimabuku. Hi. I'm speaking from、uh, Okinawa, Japan. It's、uh, Okinawa, is,、uh, uh, you know, quite, you know, south part of Japan, you know, you know island in the Pacific Ocean. So, you know, we had a typhoon for the last few days, but just, you know, it's just gone today. So it's very sunny, you know, it's eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I just woke up like an、uh, hour ago. So, you know, I'm just,、uh, you know, waking up right now. So today、um, I talk about my, uh, uh, my practice.、Um, I think it's good to start to talk about my background.、Um, I think I was interested in the art you know, since, when I, you know, since I was a child, even like you know,、uh, maybe 12 years old, 10 years old, even. So, you know, that was a thing s to make me free. But,、uh, you know, I was,、uh, it was like a rock and roll, you know, like、uh, I was excited, you know, seeing some、uh, artwork, you know, when I was a kid. Maybe this is、uh, influenced my、uh, parents, you know, they took me to a museum very often. So I was、uh, excited. But,、uh, you know,、uh, when I was like 18, you know, high school student, you know, I started to, Know about art more and more. I, you know, like、uh, art was not so free that time, especially in Japan. You know, like,、uh, you know, my, I'm a, now I'm 52 years old. So 30 years ago, you know, art scene in Japan was just following what's going on in Europe or America. It was not so free, you know.、Uh, also, you know, Young artists having a show, they had to pay you know, to the gallery, like、uh, sometime, you know, like 2,000 euro for two weeks, something like this. I felt you know, it was a normal thing, you know, like young artists, they had to pay money, they're just doing a part time job. So it was a Japanese situation at that time. So I doubt about it. You know, I didn't want to pay money to do my show. So, I,、uh, you know, because, you know, so I started to do, you know, my thing, you know, not in the gallery, you know, I started to find the space. So, I show some uh, uh, wait minutes.、Um, Oh. Okay, so this is、uh, one of the first t h i n g I did when I, you know, it was 1994. So, you know, this is a,、uh, I grew up in a place called Kobe. So that's a port town in the mainland near Osaka and Kyoto. So I always took a train. I was always taking a train, you know, you see on, On the right hand side, right? So I was looking at this, you know, like a vacant, you know, vacant spot. So I was seeing there is、uh, some trash there. So one day I became a Santa Claus over there. You know, my、uh, idea was、uh, if I become a Santa Claus, you know, in the summer. I might feel like I'm in、uh, Australia or Brazil. you know. When I was a kid, I studied you know, like a you know, country in the Southern Hemisphere. you know, They have a Christmas in the summer time. So I was amazed about that. So I thought, yeah, if I become a Santa Claus in the, no you know, in the summer、uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, maybe I can feel like I'm in Brazil or Australia. Then, You know, there is a trash, so I pick, you know, pick them up. So, my audi audience was on the train. So, you know, people on the train, you know, they look at me from the train window. So, 
they might feel like if there is a people from Australia or Brazil, you know, they might, you know, they might think about uh, their hometown. That was the idea. Also, you know, like a museum or gallery space, you know, uh, uh, people look at the artwork, you know, as long as, you know, they want, right? But the train, you know, you can, they can see only a short moment. But sometimes, you know, just looking at the thing, short moment, you know, it, you know, it might give, you know, give them a strong impact. So it's like, a, I was saying, like a kind of a natural subliminal, you know, thing. So this is how I started my art. Uh, these days, I often went to uh, Monkey Mountain. I don't know, this is my natural character. I like animal. Uh, I often go to zoo or, you know, I go to see uh, uh, animals. So there is a, a monkey mountain in Kyoto. There's no case, you know, like uh, there's a two groups of monkey, like uh, 200, 300 monkey, it's there. So, you know, there's a people taking care of monkey. They feed every morning. So, you know, they come to, they come to eat. So I asked to the people there, you know, if monkey has an art or not. So the guy told me something very interesting. So one monkey in a 200, one monkey in a 300, you know, sometimes, you know, this one monkey pick, pick up a shiny thing from the mountain. You know, like, uh, you know, like uh, 30 years ago, you know, this, you know, you know, can thing was, uh, you could, you know, take them out. So sometimes, you know, monkey found it, you know, this piece of, uh, you know, can top in a mountain. They, he looked at it. So I was amazed about that story, you know, because maybe one in a 200 is just like a people, you know, like, uh, other people was interested in uh, music or sports or baseball, but a uh, few people interested in art. So I thought maybe I can make a, a exhibition for monkeys. So actually this piece is called exhibition for monkeys. So I decided, you know, I knew they are interested in a shiny thing. So I decided to bring a many shiny objects like a Christmas ornament or, you know, anything shiny. The, I always talk to people, you know, you know, about what is going on, what is going to do. So I said to some friend, you know, I'm going to do an exhibition in a monkey, you know, for a monkey. So they said, why don't you bring my flowers? So, you know, my friend flower shop owner, they gave me uh, roses, you know, my, uh, you know, schoolmates, you know, female friend, they give me, you know, why don't you bring my uh, monkey puppet? So I had to bring other things also. So I went to Monkey Mountain. But in fact, you know, like, you know, you can see on this uh, photograph, you know, monkey has a distance, certain distance to the object I brought. That was a very interesting thing, you know. So the guy, uh, you know, monkey specialist guy, told me, you know, monkey need some time, you know, monkey sometimes need a time to catch things, you know. Now they have a distance for 10 years, but suddenly they might grab it. So it also, you know, like uh, uh, male, old male monkey is very conservative. <laughs> so kids are very, uh, you know, attractive. So it's just like people, I thought, you know, they, you know, you know, I, I thought it was very interesting, it, you know, monkey needed 10 years to accept things, maybe people too. So this is a, you know, then I thought maybe I don't have to afraid even people don't accept, you know, what I'm doing. So it was a good experience for me. So when I did it, this, you know, I had a very interesting story, you know, uh, one group of monkey from, you know, this Kyoto mountain uh, went to America in the 1970s. You know, like, uh, 
you know, one group of monkey, like a hundred monkey went to, you know, Texas, USA. So I was amazed, you know, like uh, I, I was wondering how they are doing for 20 years. Then I had a chance to visit, you know, some, you know, um, Japanese monkey in Texas uh, a few years ago. This is a Japanese monkey in Texas. You know, it was a, you know, uh, kind of an unknown place, you know, very close to Mexico border, quite south part of Texas. So I visited. So there were mon Japanese monkey. I think they were a bit uh, Americanized. They have, you know, became quite big. So what is the interesting thing is, uh, you know, first year they reduced the number, but the second year they started to grow, you know, number started to grow. So they, you know, uh, adapt to the place very quickly. That's what I heard. Yeah, they look bigger. And they, you know, I, I felt you know, they, they are doing fine there. Then I was wondering how, how, you know, do they still remember snow mountain? Because Kyoto has a snow, Texas has no snow. So I was wondering if, if they remember snow mountain. I show you some videos. Uh, no, not this one. Hmm. So I made a snow mountain. Did you see that? I mean, it's a little mountain, you know, made of ice. Because uh, I could find the ice in Texas very easily, you know, like a uh, gas town, you know, they are selling uh, ice for drink. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, amazing, you know, I don't think you know, they have seen ice or snow for a long, long time, Maybe. but, uh, you know, they reacted so, you know, spontaneously, you know, they smell it, you know, they, even they ate it, they brought it somewhere. So, one came first, then after, you know, other monkeys, Maybe they were looking at it. They started to come, you know. So I think they remember, you no, know, in the kind of deep level. Even they started to fight about, you know, getting a. Ice. Okay. So I go down.
Okay, I go back. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry for technical problem. Okay. okay. I'm going to show uh, what I did with uh, Octopus. Octopus is a very popular creature in my hometown, Kobe. There is a sea, you know, any, I mean, very popular things to eat. People see it as a very delicate thing. So uh, one of the first thing was, you know, I, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, I was a student in America because, you know, like, uh, I couldn't go to the school in Japan because, you know, art school in Japan, because uh, to join to the art school in Japan, I, you know, that time we had to study, we had to do, uh, you know, classic design, you know, like, a, you know, a plaster sculpture, you know, like, a, you know, this, I didn't want to do that, you know, so I refused to do that. So what is the possibility to study art, you know, without doing it, you know, I found uh, you know uh, studying America the good way so I went to San Francisco Art Institute for two years so that time I was wondering because uh, I was traveling from Japan to America you know even in America I you know I took a car to go to New York it takes you know 80 hours so during this trip I was uh, wondering if my local octopus uh, you know, he has been to somewhere far away. So what I did was, uh, this time was uh, bringing a, a, a octopus from South Ocean to the North Ocean. You know, I walked together with a live octopus, something like this. I was doing that, that kind of stuff. So, so these days I was invited to the exhibition called The Gift. You know, it has an exhibition about uh, giving uh, things. So uh, I decided, so I made a piece for the Zen. I decided to give a tour of Tokyo to the octopus from uh, Akashi, octopus from Kobe. So I went to take a octopus with the local octopus fisherman. Then I took them to Tokyo using a, you know, speed train. So, I show you a bit of a video. Yeah, 
ていいんじゃん。右右向こうこの人に当たるんじゃない。ありました。俺このダゴで行きますね。Yeah,、uh, yeah, I took、uh, Octopus to Tokyo. Then, you know, my idea was like,、uh, you know,、uh, showing a Tokyo, then coming back to, to Kobe alive. I call it like、um, it was my own, my own、uh, Apollo project, you know, going to Tokyo, then coming back alive. So, as you see on video, you know, We catch, maybe you don't know this method. You know, we catch an octopus using、uh, empty pots. You know, there's no bait in it. You know,、uh, you know we just put、uh, these empty、uh, pots for 48 hours, you know, bottom of the sea. The octopus,、uh, they like narrow space, they just go into it. So, this is a you know, like a classic、uh, way to catch an octopus over there. So, this is quite、uh, interesting. So, this is my collection of、uh, octopus spots. You know, you know, like right hand side, someone has a cap. If you know, octopus go into it, the cap is you know, coming down. So, they don't escape anymore. But normally, they don't escape, you know, just empty pot. And left hand side thing is very interesting. You know, they use, you know, bottle of sake. And they, you know, around it, they just、uh, like a, you know, like a rubber, you know, tire or like a bark of, you know, tree to protect, you know, because, they, you know, Is quite、uh, fragile. So sometimes they use such a thing. So, so this is a very, very classic method. So when I was invited to a、uh, ceramic biennial in a place called Arbizola in Italy, you know, they have a ceramic biennial, you know, because Arbizola is a famous place about the ceramic for. Artist, you know, like people like、uh, Lucio Fontana used to have a studio there. So his、uh, a ceramic piece is produced in that place. So they have a tradition, you know, traditional ceramic and the contemporary artist doing something together. So they want to develop this. So I don't know if they are still doing it, but they used to invite the contemporary artist to do something with a local ceramist. So I decided to make an octopus spot with them because there was a there was sea, but they don't know. There, I know there were octopus, but they don't know how this method. So, but、uh, when I was doing a research, you know, in, like a Roman time, they used to do the same thing, but、uh, today's Italian people, they Forgot about it. So, you know, it's like reminding you know, their tradition using my tradition. I show video again. So I went to 
fishing with the local, you know, local old fisherman. Down, down. Down. Lavorano col becongiù, non ce ne può rimanere. Paul. <laughs> they me, you know, it's impossible to catch an octopus using an empty ceramic pot. They are laughing at me. They don't believe me. So I made like a 20 pot. Then I throw 20 pots for two days. But, you know, it was very hard to catch. <laughs> We don't have so much time, so I should. But last one, I... No. Actually, I got one at the... by the last pot. I thought this is last one. No, <laughs> he said there is no fish today. No eating. We can't eat anymore. Poi il barattolo quando lo tira su dovrebbe prenderlo, farlo girare l'acqua, vedere se c'è il polpo. Come lo tira giù, se c'è un polpo se ne va. Toccare io, non lo so. <ride> Come lo chiamiamo? Hello! Bello! Vero, vero, vero! Hello. Ciao! Italia Octopus! Vittoria! Hey. Okay. So, this is my ceramic work. So I often make a work with an octopus. Um, so when I doing it, I discovered they are collecting stone inside of this pot. Sometimes they are holding a stone inside of this ceramic pot. It's like a, it's like a, you know, like a, like a pillow for people or maybe like a puppet for kids to sleep. So these are the stones collected by octopus. 
you know, some of them they pick up a colorful thing. <laughs> they pick up a broken bottle also. So I was interested in this thing. So I decided to make a, you know, like a, a sculpture for octopus. Uh, and uh, you know, kind of a modernist uh, house for them. Transparent uh, pot for them to stay, or colorful house pot for them to stay. And then I, you know, I wanted to you know, give a, you know, these colorful glass bowl to them. So I had a chance to have an exhibition in aquarium, you know, like aquarium people, they gave me a one big uh, uh, tank. Then I installed uh, this uh, glass pot and uh, glass object. So octopus was there. So this work is called, which color do octopuses like? You see some of them, you know, grabbing some glass bowl. This is my exhibition in the aquarium. Okay, not only uh, only for a monkey and uh, octopus, I did something with the dog also. When I was invited to a place called the Swansea in the uh, uh, United Kingdom, uh, it, it's near, it's in uh, Wales. So when I visited there, you know, it's a beautiful uh, sea place. You know, there's a beautiful sea coast. So I see uh, not many people there, but I see I saw many dogs. So even I saw dog can swim so well. So I was wondering, you know, if they have a special training to swim. So I asked to the museum curator, you know. Then she found an interesting story about a dog called Jack. This is a Jack, a black, you know, red weaver. So he lived 1930s. So he loved the sea. He loved the swimming. You know, he always, you know, stay at the sea, hanging, you know, hanging out with the kids. So he loved the swimming. And then even he rescued people, you know, from the water. So he, that time he was a famous dog. He got a, this kind of trophy because he rescued the people. So he was called the Swan Z Jack. So he was a, like a legendary dog, but, uh, but it was, happened in the 1930s. So local people, 
you know, don't remember about him anymore. I mean, he, people know about the name, Swanji Jack, but they don't really know what he is, what he was. So even there is a pub, you know, pub called the Swanji Jack, but even pub owner don't know about him so well. Even there is a memory barrier at the beach, it says. So to re remember, to remember him, I organized the dog swimming competition with a museum, local museum. So that time there's no Twitter or, yeah, I think this happened in 2003. So we just had the, you know, uh, like, a, you know, paper poster on the, on the beach and, uh, you know, we don't know how many people are coming. But uh, the day 100 people came with 100 dogs. So even without asking, they do a training session. Dogs started to do a training by themselves. So what I did was, uh, I ask each dog owner to throw dog's favorite things. Then dog go to see to take it. Uh, the woman with a megaphone is a creator of the show. I think I have a video of this too. Yeah, there is like a hundred dogs. There were hundred dogs. So, you know, each dog chased their favorite thing, you know, one by one. So I took, I made a, I videotaped, you know, so it became like a 60 minute things. So I was, I was wondering how, you know, who is, and then we, I decided to show this at the, uh, the museum. That during the show period, you know, all, uh, museum audience, they voted to uh, favorite dog, you know, entry number one to a hundred something. So 
I was wondering who is looking at this long video, but this is a not big town like New York or Tokyo or Paris. So they are very happy to see, you know, their dog video for a long time in a gallery. So this was a good opportunity for me because, you know, there is something I can do in a, such a, you know, small town. You know, even there is no, no many uh, movie theater. So they love watching, uh, uh, you know, moving video at the public space. So I found the possibility of a small town that time. Also, let's say my work is a very, you know, like I think I, people can say, you know, uh, kind of site specific, but also when I say site specific, it's a kind of people specific too, you know. This project was a, uh, possible because of this, you know, a creator, you know, she was very good contact with the local people. You know, you know she's also, it was, she was a bit like me, you know, she's keep talking about, oh, next week we have a dog, com dog swimming competition, you know, this is organized in the museum, you know, like uh, every people who meet, you know, she was talking like that. So, you know, like my work is like, uh, yeah, depend on the side or depend on the people who I work with also. You know, let's say people specific art also. Well, I wanted to show something else because I work, often work with uh, animals, but not only with animals. I mean, this is anim coming, animals coming later, but uh, when I had an invitation from a museum in Tokyo called the Watari Contemporary Art Museum. So when I received the invitation, I, I was busy, you know, I had to do something else at the opening moment. So I said, I can't participate. But the museum creator there said something interesting, you know, you don't have to start from the beginning, you can start something from the middle, middle of the show. So I thought it was a very, very interesting proposal. So, so if I can start from the middle of the show, okay, I can participate. So what I did was uh, that time I was Why event or uh, this kind of talk happen only at night time? You know, like uh, you know, like art events start from uh, today from seven, you know, six or eight, or, you know, five. You know, why don't we have a uh, event in the morning? I mean, I'm talking in the morning today. You know, so I mean, so that time Tokyo, I invited the people at uh, five forty in the morning. Why I set up this is, uh, you know, if people take a fast train of the day, they can reach a museum. So I still don't know, we still don't know how many people are coming, but the 5.40 in the morning, it's just before sunrise in time, people started to make a queue. So we did this event for four days, normal day, Saturday, Sunday, and a national holiday. So why I did it for four days is uh, because people really wanted to come, you know, people can come. There is no excuse, you know, if we do for four days. So every day we had like a 20 audience. So I brought an uh, audience to rooftop of the museum. So people is wondering what is happening. So people see this white balloon, balloon is coming from the, you know, white balloon flying away in the sun rising time. It was a kind of a, you know, people don't have to sing, you know, like, a, like an art in the night time or the, during the day, you know, you know, it's kind of conceptual art. You know, people has to read what is, you know, idea behind or, you know, but the morning, you know, you, you know, 
just you know like a follow just uh, people don't have to think just uh, seeing you know white balloon flying away in the uh, in the uh, sun rising time it's a bit like a cafe au lait you know dinner you think about what you know you are going to have but the morning you don't have to think so much right just uh, you know daily routine something like this So people see white balloon flying away in the sky. Then after that, uh, birds started to fly. It was a little bit like a magic because uh, when I was doing research, you know, I think, you know, that time I used to live in uh, abroad. So when I went to research, I had a jet lag. So I woke up very early. So I always watching at uh, what is going on in, uh, some rising time. So I saw some people nearby the museum had the raised pigeons. So you know, they are releasing a pigeon in a, like a, a very early morning. So I was totally amazed because uh, Tokyo has no space, you know, you know, parking a car, maybe same, just like a New York, you know, just a parking a car, you know, people has to pay every 10 minutes, you know, 110, you know, one dollar for 10 minutes. It was very, no private space, let's say. But, you know, like in the early morning, you know, some people is using a Tokyo sky, you know, as a private thing. So I was amazed. So I went to see him, then I asked him, you know, can you release your pigeons right after my balloon? So, so he, enjoy, you know, enjoyed to do it. So, so uh, it became like a magic. Yeah, white balloon flying away is about starts to fly. So people look at it. That's again, you know, people don't have to think so much. Just, uh, you know, feeling good. You know, like. Uh, Birds just keep flying, you know, just above you. So this is a event I did about uh, twenty years ago, called the with, bird, with birds at down. I show something quickly. Um, this is a work I did at the uh, uh, place called Ishinomaki. They had a, a big earthquake uh, 10 years ago. Uh, you, probably you remember, you know, big tsunami, you know. So this place, uh, village was, damaged by tsunami and and then you know there is a peninsula so all villages are damaged by tsunami so now they are building a wall to protect from uh, another tsunami so even they live in the uh, sea coast they don't see a sea anymore so it's quite a depressing place so I was invited, so somebody wanted to make a exhibition over there. So I was invited. So uh, at, the, at the very end of the, this peninsula, there was a beautiful natural beach. So there's a tree. So I just made a branch there in a standing position. The piece is called erect.
Well, I found that this is quite interesting. Like just uh, things try to make it direct. Maybe I found it like it's like a starting point of a, like a primitive sculpture, you know, like a starting point of a sculpture. Just a thing, you know, make things stand in position. So I found that interesting. Then this is a new work. Just I realized last week in Kyoto, there is a historical site uh, called Iwa Shimizu Hachimangu. It's a shrine. So there's an empty space. I had a chance to do a show over there. So I mean, that's very historical spot, but the behind of this, there is a you know, big uh, residence area made of concrete. So, also, so city is uh, composed by uh, this uh, historical site and the concrete residence, like a Bauhaus style uh, uh, apartment. So I wanted to put them together in a sense. So I decided to make something with a concrete. So I get, you know, like, a, if time pass, concrete just uh, throw them away, you know. So I gather <laughs> the, uh, concrete, it was used already. Then I watched them. So I discovered they have a, you know, their own character. Some of them are very beautiful, I found. You know, I mean, I watched, you know, them by, them, by myself. Then I found that they have a face, uh, you know, they have a beautiful texture. So I started to feel like, uh, in a sense, very human, concrete as a human thing. So I put the concrete. In a standing position. I wanted to, you know, like a spotlight, you know, like uh, use the concrete for one day. So this is a, like a, not a sculpture using a concrete, more like a sculpture for concrete, you know, celebrating a concrete for me. So, I mean, this is very fresh and you know, just I did it last week in Kyoto. So, Okay, I think time came, right? So I think I finish now.